first reading today is from Colossians 1, 9 to 14, reading from the NIV version of the Bible. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we haven't stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you might live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you might have great endurance and patience and joyfully give thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light for he's rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of our sins the second reading is from ephesians 2 verses 11 to 14 therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, you were excluded from the citizenship in Israel and you were foreigners and covenants to the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now... In Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. As I thought about the name Deliverer, I began to think about what it means to deliver. At this time of year when we think of delivering our deliveries, we might think of a man in a red suit coming down the chimney with a sack full of parcels. Or maybe we think of knocking on a door carrying a beautifully wrapped parcel containing a surprise for a relative or friend. Or maybe even we think of a knock on our own door and there's a brown cardboard box from our favourite online retailer. In each of these examples there are, if you think about it, four parts to a process of delivery. Firstly there's the object of package being delivered and at this time of the year it's usually a present or a gift. Secondly there's the source, where or who is the item coming from? a warehouse or maybe even the North Pole. Thirdly, there's the destination, the person or place the package is going, and finally, the delivery itself, how the package is transported from the source to the destination. This is where you need the deliverer. When we think of the coming of Jesus at this time of year, we remember that he came as the deliverer. In, Col in the Colossians passage it says, For he has rescued or delivered us from the dominion of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. If we look again at the four parts we looked at earlier in the context of Jesus coming, we are the package, the precious object being delivered. Every person is precious in the eyes of God. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We are so precious the Father willingly sacrificed his Son to deliver us. So where are we delivered from? Where is the source? Colossians again describes our source as the kingdom of darkness. The Bible is also clear that we were once separated from God and his goodness. In Ephesians 2 it says, Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope, and without God in the world. And where are we being delivered to? Our destination, Ephesians continues. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We are brought into the presence of God, the Father of all his goodness. And Jesus is the deliverer, the one who takes the package, us, and delivers us from darkness into the light of God's presence. And Ephesians again. For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier. Through Jesus' coming, we are also delivered in other ways. 
In John 5 we have the story of the man at the pool at Bethsaida. Jesus says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. He delivers him from sickness to health. Before the healing, the man says, I've no one to help me to get into the pool. He showed that he was isolated and alone, but Jesus singles him out and delivers him from his loneliness and his isolation as well as his sickness. In the story of the Gadarene demoniac, Jesus delivers a man from oppression by evil spirits. It says in the Bible, and the people went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. Suggesting that he had deliverance from shame and also from mental illness. In Matthew 8, Jesus delivers the disciples by calming a life-threatening storm on the Sea of Galilee. And in John 11, we have the ultimate story of deliverance on earth when Jesus raises Lazarus to life, delivering him even from death itself. As we remember Jesus come into the world as a baby, who grew up as a child and became an adult, just like us. We also remember that he made the sacrifice of his life to break down the barrier between us and God's presence and goodness, delivering us into the kingdom of light. Father, we thank you that in every situation or difficulty we face, we can be confident that Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is our deliverer and has the power to deliver us from our troubles and bring us into his peace. Amen.